This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV. We're in Liverpool here for the press conference to announce Collision Course on July the 12th at Echo Arena. Yeah. With me I have Cruiserweight Boxer Tony Bellew. How are you Tony? I'm great, thanks Coogs. How's it going? Yeah, you look like you've right filled out into the weight in a minute. It's going on. your fat. It's I'm going alright brother man. It's going alright. Yeah? It's going alright. You're much happier now are you, that you can put on them extra few pounds? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I have to actually lose weight, to be honest, at the moment, because uh, I'm 15 stone, so I've got £10 to lose, but it's £10 of good weight, so I'm happy with where I'm at. I'm comfortable. Uh, I'm fighting at a weight division I should be, and it's all about July the 12th. Uh, collision course, I know why it's called this. Everyone knows why it's called this. It's to do with you and uh, Nathan Cleverly both bringing a bill and potentially fighting each other later on in the year. Okay. But let's talk about your opponent first on July the 12th, which is what you'll have in mind. That's all it's about. It's all it's about July 12th. It's not about anything else, it's just about July the 12th. I'm really talking about the title. Okay. Collision. I'm on a collision course with Dos Santos. A, a very, very durable, hard punching Brazilian. So I'm very aware of what I'm going in with, and that's all I'm interested in. You get put in with these punches a lot, didn't you? Yeah, because everyone thinks I'm chinny. <laughs> that's what you do, didn't you? Yeah. But uh, I've only been wiped out by one, to be honest. And uh, and he was exceptional to be totally fair. Little midget couldn't half punch, but uh, it is what it is. Fantastic fighter. I lost to a great fighter uh, on a shitty night for me, but what you do? You, just, you crack on and you pick yourself up and dust yourself off and, and carry on. Um, how much do you know about the Santos? I know he's strong, he's durable. He's been in with the European champion, he's never been stopped. Yeah, he's all round, just pretty much all round basic, but, but strong and durable, so. We'll see, you know, like I say, never been stopped, so that's the kind of thing that people want to see, isn't it? People come to see me because I can stop people, so, you know, we'll see. That's not, I don't know, we'll, time will tell. thing is, he's a solid, proven, tested cruiserweight. That's all I can ask for at this stage. I've already fought a former world title challenger at cruiserweight in Valerie Brudov. This is a step in a very similar direction, and uh, it is what it is, mate, like your T-shirt says. Indeed. How do you compare your cruiserweight debut, opponent-wise, to Nathan Cleverley's? You know how I compare it. Fishing, aren't you? No, I'm asking you. You know exactly how I compare it. We've not spoke it. about this, so I'm asking you. I'm okay. going to ask Nathan exactly the same thing. Oh, yeah, well, what's the answer? Because we both know the real true answer is. The true answer is, I fought a cruiserweight. I tried and tested cruiserweight on my cruiserweight debut. He fought a light heavyweight on his cruiserweight debut. It's as simple as that. Sean Corbin had been smashed in two rounds. In two rounds by Carl Morat. Are you telling me that's a cruiserweight? I'm asking you, is that a cruiserweight? A man who gets okay. smashed off Carl Morat in two rounds. Coogan, is that a cruiserweight? Yes or no, Coogan? I see where you're going, Tony. Yes but the or questions no. are for you, not for me. Yes I'm or asking no. you the questions. Yes or Tony. no, Coogan. I can see where you're I can see where you're going. I see your point. I didn't I didn't say can you no. see me point. <laughs> I said a man who gets smashed of Carl Morat in two rounds, is he a cruiserweight, yes or no? I understand your point. Okay. This little fence here I'm perched on yeah. in a minute, so I'm going to stay on Stuck now. right up your head. Yeah, that's alright. That's not a problem for me. Okay. But um, I only asked you to compare them. I'm going to ask Nathan exactly the same thing. And, I can and see compare it. There's many different ways to compare it. I mean, listen. I've said it a few times and people actually laugh, but I'm deadly serious when I say it. Oh, right, let me ask you another question. Would you, have, would you have rather have had the test that Nathan had on your cruiserweight debut than the one Stop against it. Stop it. Did you see the word you just used then? Huh. Go back. Go back on yourself and repeat what you just said. Would you have rather had the test that... The what? It's still a test, whether it's... The what? Hold on a minute, it's still a test. Regardless of whether it's a good test or a bad test, it's still a test. Okay, well, Jamie Ambler was a test on me pro debut, wasn't he? Okay. No, uh -huh. he wasn't. Well, listen, a test is a test. Professional no, flying. it's not me. It's not. A test is a test. So, some of them are called, as in, as us fighters know, some are just called gimmies. And you don't get many of them. I've had a couple of them in my career. But Tony Moore was the greatest gimme I've ever had, I'll be honest. The best gimme... I, I hope every morning when I wake up, I face a Tony Moore again. Because I got in the ring with that fella that night and thought, this isn't happening. He cannot throw punches this slow and expect not to get hit back. And I, and I wasn't wrong. He actually was that bad. But you only get one or two of them in your whole career. And that night I got one. And in his last fight, he got one too. It is what it is. It is what it is. 
I know obviously you're focused on July the 12th, but me to ask, listen, are you looking at a potential world title shot after this fight, or are you looking at this? That's rematch? all I've ever been interested in. Coogan is fighting for a world title and winning a world championship. I seem to be the only fellow who fights the best world champions and wants the real, the real belts. Everyone's winning these world titles, and I seem to be the only fellow who fights the, the legitimate number one division champion. So, listen, I've got to start taking, uh, I've got to start taking people's examples and start fighting guys who. You should fight for world titles. That's no that before anyone said that's no digs at anybody else because I'm over the moon for guys. If you win a world title, I'm over the moon for you. It's fantastic. But like I say, I kick myself at times thinking, why did I choose Adonna Stevenson when I could have chose Baby Tuman off to Borders Cloud? I'd be a world champion now, wouldn't I? And that's not me being big headed or blowing me on trumpet. That's just me telling the truth. If I had to pick Baby Tuman off, he'd have probably not fought me. So I'd have probably fought for one of them WBA titles. The same one that uh, the same one that Jürgen Bremer fought for, and I'd be a world champion by now. Because at the end of the day, I'd tank him and Bremer. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It's just, but listen, like it says on your t-shirt once again, it is what it is. I've, I don't know. Stupid at times it is for me, because I always want to face the best, and it's it's been to my detriment. That's how bad it is when you're going in boxing. And, and you pay a severe price because you want to face the best guys. What can you do? I suppose I should just face absolute shite every single time. Build up a record of something like 105 or something like that, and then and then fight for like the WBU or or the IBO or or the WBF, something like that. And I'll just be a world champion. Eh? Fuck it, might as well. All right. Listen, Tony Bellew, this is a great bill on July the 12th for Liverpool. Yes, it is. It's fantastic. The lads that are fighting on the bill, we've got, in my opinion, the best prospect in the whole world in Callum Smith. And I'm not just saying that because he's my mate, and I've known him since he was a baby. He's genuinely the best prospect in the whole world. Uh, we've got the best, one of the best heavyweight prospects in the world, crazy enough, the Olympic gold medalist and champion, Anthony Joshua. We've got Callum's younger brother. I'm fucking sick of these Smith that many, that many and that many of them are talented. Stephen, who will be fighting for the WBC title and will, in my opinion, be winning one. Uh, you've got Paul, who's on the verge of his own world title fight. You know, you've got Rocky Fielding, who's going into a really good fight there that he's got mentioned for him. And then, you know, as I say, the bill just looks so stacked and so good. And, and you know, we've got the other fella as well, so it, it looks like a fantastic bill. And I'm looking forward to being part of it. Make no, I am not this top of the bill thing that everyone likes to go on about. I'm part of a bill with all the scouts on the bill, and I'm, and I'm so happy to, to to be part of a bill with all these guys on it because I'm telling you now, in five or six years' time, you're going to be looking at a bill at the stage, possibly three or four or five world champions all in one bill. So it'll be good to look back on. Um, all right. Well, listen, Tony Bailey, thanks for talking to uh, IFL TV. Thank you for having me. And uh, we look forward to this big sexy man here. I've already done him. I just felt his nuts as well outside before on the pitches. Got a cracking, cracking lump on him there, you know. Okay. Pack lunchbox on him. It's yeah. going to do well. Women will love him when he gets bigger. Yeah. I if think they love him now. If he doesn't get any bigger, you know, when he gets any bigger, he's going to be hitting the ceiling, isn't he? <laughs> Charlie Bellew, thanks for talking to uh, Eiffel TV. Thanks, and uh, We'll catch up with you soon.